Hey everybody, welcome back to the Automation Minute. You know, I was just prepping today's podcast to get it out for 3.30 and I was came across some information on Rockwell's new L9 controller, the 5590. Now, I had talked to somebody off the record at Rockwell before Automation Fair. They said, yeah, we're going to we're gonna launch this at Automation Fair, even though it's not coming out till you know, mid-2025. And I said, oh, that's great. Can't wait to find out about it. And then the fair came and left and nothing was published. Even in fact, the the uh, marketing people I talked to at Rockwell, they didn't know what I was talking about. So, you know, I kept my eyes open. I kept looking and I came across this set of public slides, 100% public, that uh, I wanted to share with you this morning to talk about the 5590. I mean, it's been a while since the 5580 came out. And so uh, now with the 5590 on the roadmap, it's, uh, it's gonna kind of exciting to take a look at and see what it has. And it has some cool features. I'm You probably can notice one right there from the picture. But in any case, let's go ahead and switch uh, scenes here. And that way you can see the slide deck in a much bigger view. And what I'm going to do here before we get into the 5590, I want to tell you about two products I have for sale at theautomationschool.com. That is Factory IO and PLC Logics. You will not find them less expensive anywhere in the world. And when you purchase these through theautomationschool.com, you get a free course. Now, the course for PLC Logics. 5,000 is done. It's been out for a couple of years. I am going to refilm it next year, but you get that whole course right now. The factory IO, that's what I'm doing. I think you guys have seen in my last video I did earlier in the week. I got PLCs all over the training center. I'm actually filming that. So I'll be getting back to that this afternoon and be doing that the rest of the week. So you'll start seeing lessons be added to that as they go. I'm focusing on the Rockwell Island Bradley uh, ones first, and then I'll go back and do the Siemens. So if you know somebody who could use some help becoming a better programmer, these are two great tools that won't break the bank. Um, one of them, Factory IO, does require that you have either a, a PLC or a soft PLC. Uh, PLC Logics is kind of like a RS Logix 5000 Studio 5000 simulator. It simulates the PLC and everything else. Um, both these packages, you can get a lifetime copy under $500. And remember, if you buy them from us, you actually save off the list price and you get a free course on how to use them. And if any of you guys want to buy multiple copies and want me to do a lunch and learn for you in exchange for your business, just get in touch with me. Be happy to do a lunch and learn for your folks if you're going to outfit some of the PCs in your facility with this software. So with that said, let's get into the main event here, and that is the 5590. Now, these are the highlights. Okay, and I'm just going to go through these. First of all, um, all of the 5590s are SIL 2 safety compatible. So they're all safety controllers. Now, you can't do SIL 3 without the partner but they're all SIL 2. That's very interesting. Next, they have double the memory, so um, compared to a 5580. So that's very interesting indeed. Also, twice as fast as scan time. Now, these are twice as fast in a 5580, but 40 times faster than an L7, and that's much faster than the old uh, Compact Logics and Control Logics older generations. Now, they also have an improvement in motion access performance. They're saying 2x there, support for up to 512 real and virtual motion axes. And then they also have two Ethernet IP ports. I think this is great. They're both gigabit. They both can have independent IP addresses or they can be DLR. And uh, this, I think this is great. And they can even be used as the, uh, as the port that cross-loads the program if you're doing redundancy. They also have double the Ethernet IP node capacity, 600 plus Ethernet nodes per controller. That's a lot of nodes for one controller. I don't know if you would put that many nodes on. Now, it's kind of like putting all your eggs in one basket, but there may be times, especially if you're monitoring a lot of stuff, that you want all those nodes in, right? You can have a lot of VFDs you're controlling, or you can have a lot of maybe uh, Ethernet to IO link devices out there. So just more capacity is always good, right? And then scan time improvement twice as fast for the redundant controller systems because they're using that new front port to do the cross-loading. So it's a one gigabit port, right? So this does require the RM3. We talked about that uh, last week, I believe. But in any case, uh, also increased performance for SIP security. So let's take a look at the deep dive here on the hardware. Here you can see um, this looks like the X, this is the XT version. So you can see that there but because um, it's that darker color, right? So in any case, the front door is now vertical. That's interesting. So they say aiding in tamper-proof prevention of, I don't know how it aids in tamper-proof. looks like you can just flip it up. How is it tamper-proof? Anyways, but in any case, 
Here's some really cool things in there. All right, you got the QR code, that's great. Now it's a micro SD card, not a standard SD, a micro SD. And uh, the program port is now USB-C, which uh, I always, the USB-B ports, I always, they always seem very stiff. I know somebody says, well, that's so it doesn't shake out. You can't, you can't, they're not rated for 24 seven operation, number one. Number two, when I feel like I'm breaking the port by pulling things in and out, that's, that's too stiff. But in any case, the mode switch is under there and no more key, it looks like a toggle switch from here. And there's a reset button too, which, I, which I'm very thankful for. Um, we have the dual RJ45 Ethernet IP ports, both a gigabit. And um, we have uh, new LEDs, more LEDs on the front. We have, uh, uh, I think I talked about all that other stuff. Oh, and it does come with an eight gigabyte SD card, micro SD card. So that's very cool. So that is the new 5590 Control Logics that is coming, I think, mid 2025. It doesn't say here. But in any case, um, I want to thank Rockwell for making these slides public so we get access to them. And if you guys want a, a quick look at factory IO, I can switch over to that VM. Let's see here. Okay, so here's factory IO. So this is a full 3D um, virtual factory. Okay, it has picks in place, it has conveyors, it has tanks, and all kinds of things here. And some of these applications, they really make you think. And uh, sometimes if you try to run them faster than normal, you actually got to get in there and move, uh, move some of the, um, some of the components around. I know um, I had to move these uh, photo eyes around because the, 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 the coasting of the boxes coming down the conveyors, they would coast onto the transfer uh, conveyor. So um, in any case, and you can do that. It's very easy. Just pick them up and move them. But you can actually do regular speed and then you could do four times speed. Now, the other thing about factory IO is um, you do, uh, you can create your own custom systems. Um, you can't bring in, one of the things that I, I wish they would change is you can't bring in your own your own drawings. So in any case, but here's the thing about this. Now with you, Alan Bradley, um, you're going to need a PLC. First of all, only Ethernet PLCs, okay? Um, and that uh, does not include the PLC 5E. I tried it, it doesn't work. So um, 505, Micrologix 1100, 1400, Micro 800s, which are great because you use tags and they're the same tags you can use in Control Logics and Micro Logics and Compact Logics. Um, micro 800, I should say, the same tags. And so whether you're using a Micro 800 or a Compact Logics, you're using really the same tags. The programming looks different, as you guys know. So in any case, so the other thing about this is that um, the emulators won't work with this. All right, the simulator, the uh, new Micro 800 simulator does. And um, they say SoftLogix 5800 does. I don't know if Logic Echo does. You guys, if you have Logix Echo, if it sits like a, if you uh, attach to it over Ethernet, like a regular PLC, it should work, right? But I don't have a copy. So in any case, um, on the Siemens side, I tried the S7-1200, the 1500, the PLC Sim, all work great. But again, a nice tool if you're looking to shopping your skills. Again, they start out super easy, but then you get really complicated. Really has really gets you thinking, you know, designing state machines and, you know, uh, very uh, thoughtful code to get it all to work. So I did want to show you that. And again, Factory IO and PLC Logics are on sale now at theautomationschool.com. And again, if you buy it from me instead of going right to the vendor, you're going to get a free course plus an extra discount off the list price. So with that, I just want to thank you all for tuning in. We do have a podcast coming out. It should be out at 3.30. I still got to do some of the, you know, when you go to schedule it and publish it out, there's all these things you got to do. But in any case, um, check that out. I think uh, you guys will enjoy it. Really cool product from a major vendor. And uh, I also, I don't expect to be back this week unless I finish up one of the Factory IO courses, then I'll come back to tell you about that. But um, with that, if I don't talk to you, I'm out next week. Please have a great holiday. I want to wish you good health and happiness. And until next time, my friends, peace.